Hi. <laughs> So I'm, I'm Omut, I'm 20 years old, I was born and raised in Kadıköy, Istanbul and I study medicine in Bahçeşehir University and I identify as a trans woman. I myself was, you know, I am still support, financially supported by my parents and I do study medicine so I don't have like time for even like a part-time job so I'm not like I haven't worked a day in my life but I know that you know people who come out as trans in their own workplaces they are fired or harassed and yeah for so many of the times those don't work out regarding I think it is the consideration of the customer profile so for example, if you're running a store and you're running a business and like you have to think of the customer who's walking into that store and in some of the, some of the instances those customers might be unsupportive and extremely transphobic to an extent that they wouldn't shop at that specific store if a trans person is employed there. So, um, companies to feel safe for their own stores and to feel safe for their own sales. They just go ahead and fire these people so that nobody would have controversies regarding, you know, who's there to sell them stuff. Well, when you're banished from your own house, from the hearts of your own parents, and you're not also allowed to be employed on any commercial business, um, the last resort for anybody, also for cis women who are struggling with this and also for some men who are struggling with life. The last resort is always your body and the way you sell your body. So for trans women in Istanbul especially, they usually work around in Taksim and they usually stay at these houses. There are houses for trans people, for trans female sex workers. and. They usually stay at houses like that and they usually, you know, um, stroll around in certain streets hoping that somebody would come up and pick them up and like pay for the night sex. But they're definitely like, in so many of the instances, they are killed and they are. But I have had read an interesting statistic about this. I know that when, like, most of the times, actually my friend had shared this statistic with me. I know that so many of the times when a trans woman is killed, even when you know she's a sex worker, she's usually killed by someone she previously knows. So it's not usually strangers just coming up to them to stab them. It's usually the people they know from their past, their brothers, their relatives who are ashamed of them, who are out to kill them. Happy, happy, happy. I know that so many trans people run away from their houses or they're actually banished from their own houses because of who they are. I know that an instance where a trans woman from Eastern Turkey ran away to Istanbul because he, her parents didn't accept her as the way she is, she pursued her medical transition here and her surgery here and everything. But then after all those years, there was a moment where she received a letter not a letter, of course, a call, a text from her parents saying that they want her back, they, would, they just want to, you know, they just miss her so much and that they accept and understand who she is. So with haste and excitement, she races back home all the way to eastern Turkey and um, she's shot before entering the village that she grew up in. She's what? She's shot. Then? Shut. Then, yeah. Uh -huh. Wow. Yeah, so her parents were lying to her to call her back, to lure her back, to kill her. Yes. So there are many instances where definitely parents are cruel in ways unimaginable. But yeah, I was really lucky in that part because, like, after those few months of um, hell, as I put it, for all those months of, you know, where my mother has said to me the worst things actually, the worst names or the worst 
insults I have heard like from anywhere at all. After all those months, I think she came to a state of acceptance and she um, is now basically okay with all this, but not so okay to like support it extensively because we all still have those moments of fights and disagreements and you know um, moments of name callings etc but she's definitely there and she hasn't banished me from her house i am still financially supported by my parents and yeah i am privileged that that happened I am University, uh, 20 years old. I'm from Morocco. I come uh, to Turkey because I'm transgender. I can't live in uh, my country, Morocco, because uh, it's very dangerous. Uh, they can't kill me because I'm transgender. I can't find job for uh, for uh, take the hormone for money take the hormone because I don't use it. I want. I wish to go to Europe for uh, tra uh, translation, op operation translation for be a uh, woman. I wish to in the future go to Europe and uh, continue my study and uh, doing my translation because I I don't I don't like me. I uh, I want to. Uh, uh, do my trans trans uh, translation and be a real woman. This is my dream. I want from uh, uh, LGBT organization just help the trans people or LGBT people for find the job because the trans people uh, uh, they can't uh, find the job because not easy. I wish to help me and help other trans for find a job. I want to work in find money. Uh, it's the use the hormones, uh, shopping, makeup, anyway. But the organization don't help. In Turkey, when I go to other place uh, out uh, Taksim, uh, the, the people uh, they see me uh, angry, different. Uh, don't accept it me and uh, sometimes I have problem I was have problem with the Arab people in Turkey don't accept it, uh, trans people I not feel uh, free and safe in Turkey I, I every time I'm fried fried and, and uh, uh, in the this this period, I can't go outside because I was depressed. Uh, because the people don't accept me. I I want just to be in my home. This room is safe for me. The organization uh, LGBTQ in Turkey help, but uh, time to time, not uh, every time. Just uh, do uh, the party or party for Turkey, activities. the activities, the activities, trans activities or LGBT activities and help time to time, not every time.